Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and I am here with a very special guest, my friend Jason Perez from Every Night is Game Night, and we are going to sit here at home and rank the Oniverse games. Yay, look at that. We're not talking about some history stuff, get <laughs> geeking out. And this is mainline gaming content. I can't wait. I, neither can I, actually. Like, these games have been in our lives for years. Mm -hmm. I've never yeah. actually tried to rank them, so this will be a, an exciting experience. I'm really curious about what you have to say, too. I, uh, I'm i the host of Everybody's Game Night, and this was actually the first episode I did with Anthony Chatfield uh, three years ago when we... Uh, when the t podcast was called Table for One, it was Anthony's podcast, and then I came in like Darth Vader and just took it over. <laughs> <laughs> but this was the first episode we ranked. Uh, at the time, there were three Oniverse games. Uh, we had not played Urbion, so we didn't rank that one. But that was the first. Uh, that was our first stab at a review, and I listened back to it now, and it's like, oh man, you had. Uh, you're a lot better at this now. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, some of my earliest YouTube playthroughs are Onirim and Sylveon, and I look back and I'm like, ooh, that was an old camera. Ooh. I didn't have a mic like <laughs> <laughs> look how we've grown we have and these games have grown with us like i feel like the oni versus it's just a set of solo classics you know yeah. um, i think anybody who's a serious solo gamer will have one of these cross their table at some point each game is crafted i think that's probably the best way to put these you know like you can really kind of pound out uh some games and especially within the concept where um, each game is kind of, you know, there's the tile laying game and there's the dice game and there's this game, you know, like kind of fits in lanes. Mm -hmm. and it'd probably be easy to just say, okay, you know, check boxes, so to speak. But I definitely don't get the sense here. Like each of these games is just crafted for the, you know, as, as good an experience as uh, Shadi Torbay could get out of these games. Yeah. The, I, we ranked number six and my lowest is ranked to 7.5. Yeah. So. Actually, I also wanted to say before we start this list, like we're ranking games that I really like. I have all these games. I think they're all keepers. I really enjoy them. I have no intention of trading any of them off. And, you know, so this is the, all of these rankings are coming from a place of love, even in right. last place for me. 7.5 is the lowest, uh, and it only goes up from there. So, Indeed. It's a great series. So without further ado, you're the guest. What is your number six? Number ladies six. First. <laughs> I will, I'm going to go with ladies first over there. Guys. Hit me with your number six. Well, my number six, since you're making me go first, is Castellion. Ladies first! <laughs> Castellion is my number six. I like it, but it's not my favorite. Obviously, because it's number six. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, Castellion is the tile laying game in the series. You're basically trying to build a castle and put different formations of tiles inside of the castle to defend it from oncoming invaders. they are traitors in your tile pile that act as a timer for the game. And once you draw too many of them, you have to face your ordeal. And if you haven't built things up correctly, then you're screwed. Is that about right? <laughs> That's basically it. <laughs> So the reason it did not make first for me is that I like it, but I didn't, I feel like there's so many, I feel like there are rules ambiguities in it that make it annoying, especially with what tiles can go next to each other, but ways you can break the rules. And also because the timer, you can never see it coming, you don't know. Um, I mean, sometimes it feels like the game ends a little prematurely mm -hmm. if you just draw badly. Um, I mean, it's fine. I still really enjoy it. I, I get a kick out of playing it. I posted a play through this past week. So it's not a deal breaker, just not my favorite. Right. Uh, it is later on my list. This is a really awkward list to do because we're ranking the same games. Yeah. So uh, when we talk about it and everything, but I will say, I will hold my tongue because it is later on Ooh. the list. So All right. So what's your number six? Right uh, my number six is Nautilion. Ooh. Um, so Nautilion is the roll and move version. Uh, I remember reading the Designer Diary on BGG where um, he, uh, Shaddy really wanted to take on the challenge of doing a roll and move game. It's like this malign me mechanism. Uh, this is, you know, something that you never want to see in your game. So it's like, mm, you're going to solo game with this stuff right here. Um, so how he did it was it's roll and move, but it's like roll and then think a lot and then move <laughs> roll and then like okay i'm going to think for a couple of minutes and assign stuff uh <laughs> and then you can execute execute your movement so they yeah, good on you buddy um again this is a 7.5 for me I, and i was actually lower because i because when you first suggested this i'm like okay a chance to play them all again so uh it was a little bit lower but then i played it again and i'm like man this is good 
<laughs> I can it happily really put this every time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, my my hang up on it, what what the reason why it's number six, is of all the games, of all the Oniverse games, Nautilion is the only game where pretty much all of the information is like face up in front of you. So you have all of the tiles and you know you kind of loop them around and you can make a swirl or make a little whatever uh but it's 36 tiles you play the base game and if you play the expansions you get more tiles uh which i always do <laughs> always mixing uh, expansions because that's what makes these games really good a it's cut true. above the rest um and as opposed to the other games where like everything's like a face down deck you turn or like a you know face down pile of tiles and you turn stuff um here everything's in front of you so it creates this kind of like mental overload at least for me that like it makes the makes it a little bit more thinky than i want in kind of a breezy casual you know uh but yet strategic game this one feels a little bit more thinky than that and i understand that that's what makes it an attractive version i think um uh, Morton Monrad Pedersen, this is his favorite game, and probably for that reason, because it's the thinkiest. I feel like it just gives me a little bit too much info at once, where it's like, oh, I'm going to land on this two. Uh, there's uh, three twos along the path, so I better make sure that I can d- do this one, but then there's only six. You know, I already lost all my fours, and it's like, ah, I haven't even moved. <laughs> <laughs> And like I have kind of fat fingers, so like laying out the the, the the trail of tokens and then flipping them over if I want to play again. Okay, so that's a, a little bit kind of that I share. Mm-hmm. Yes, right. Yeah, it's a little bit fiddly on that. And when I want to play a solo game, any solo game, not just an Oniverse game, um, I want to play it again and again and again just to kind of like you know, yeah, justify the time on the table. Uh, so Nautilian is the hardest one to do that. These are minor. Uh, one of these is like a style preference thing. One of them is just you know, you know I have very kind of clumsy hands thing uh still an excellent game um and i there's and the expansions are okay the expansions i don't know what that I, any of these are kind of a feature i do like to shuffle them in mm-hmm. um but as opposed to the other games where the expansions are like wow i can't miss them the expansions here are okay um so for these very niggling reasons i have put Nautilion as my number six that's fair so moving on to number five since it makes sense hey harley uh my number five hey, buddy. <laughs> so my number five is actually Nutsillion. So that was my ah, second class. So again, like I actually hate the setup because it's annoying. Yes, but um, also like so as you move through the game, you pick up all those pieces. So if you make it too swirly or you put the parts of the pathway too close together, I start like getting lost in my own pathway. Because as you're sh- so basically in Nutsillion, for those of you who don't know, um, your ship. And then an evil ship are like moving towards each other's home bases. And so you roll three dice and you have to assign one die to yourself, one die to the bad ship, and then one die to what's called the dark house. And depending on the value that you assign it, it can like take things away from you in the game. So as you go, both you and the evil ship are like eating up tokens in the pathway that you've set out. So it gets more gaps as you travel. And for me, that becomes visually confusing and I also just don't like setting it up. Uh, but I actually really like the game. I like thinking about it. And I actually thought the expansions were pretty good. Um, each There's several different ships that you can try that have different configurations of crew. So like mm-hmm. even within just a version of the base game, you can try different stuff. But I also really love... Um, I actually really like the... Uh, oh god, what's it called? The Mercenaries expansion, where like you okay. have a ship battle partway through. I thought that was right. really good. There's a couple of really neat things. Um, but... It's, you know, it's just not my favorite. I like it, but it's not my favorite. I will play it. I, I, I definitely, yeah. it got, it, re- it went higher in my ranking when I replayed it. I think I, yeah. I think I was very focused because I remember doing the review on Every Night is Game Night with Anthony, and I remember being very focused on that fiddly part. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's a very hard game to set up, and for whatever reason, I was thinking about that at the time. Uh, just laying it out again, though, and playing it, it there was, a, I didn't, mind that so much yeah it's and fun the, the, the fun was there and sometimes i'm in the mood for it right that's where i'm at yeah what was your number five all right so number five was the reason why this game why this list is coming on now because i hadn't played it and i never really got into it because it was out of print it was hard to find but because we are doing these top six Oniverse games i sought out a copy i traded for one and it is urbion so urbion um, the the solitaire card game. It is only cards. Um, I think this was was this 
before Onirim? No, I think it's the second in the series. I think Onirim is the first, and then Erbion slash Equilibrion, it was originally published as Equilibrion, is the second. Right. Yeah. So then I feel like Equilibrion is more of an apt descriptor for what this game is all about. Yeah. Uh, and I understand why you didn't want to call it Equilibrion. It's kind of a mouthful. Um, but I, I think my favorite part of Erbion, and I was really happy to get this down. So like, what you're doing is you're, you're – you're playing, you have a deck of cards, and the deck of cards represent two factions, I think it's the Incube and the Sog- Sogne? Sogne? Yeah, I just call them, like, the cats and the bear ones. Like, you know, like <laughs> just different animals, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> there's, like, the cats and spider side, and then there's, like, the cute little bears and birds and fish side, you know? It's like, I don't know. <laughs> Total art critics over here. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we could we could comment on the art at some point, but we that, can. that's like you know, one of the distinguishing features. But at least in this particular game, yeah. early on, so you have the two sides, and it's a deck full of cards that represent either of the two sides. So you're playing them to either side of this like central row. The central row is the city, so Erbion. Uh, and you're playing them in such a way where you have to kind of achieve balance. So like you have you know minus two, minus two, minus two on one side, and then minus one. So you're looking for the minus three to put there. You know you're drawing one card at a time. You kind of have to figure out that balance. Uh, there are chaos cards that kind of throw the balance off. Um, so you're playing one card at a time. You're trying to make sure you're kind of keeping things in balance. That's cool enough. And but I think the 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 spice in the meatball that kind of takes this a cut above. Uh, some other cards besides the kind of equilibrium seeking mm-hmm. is that push your luck mechanism. Yes, yes. Where you don't just want to do a, uh, go a couple of rows and you know just like t- acclaim them and then you know keep playing. You get a bonus for establishing balance in all four rows. So like you have three and you, you know you're looking at your deck going if I can pull something right then I can really achieve that balance but I might get a chaos card which might just completely blow up my uh, my stuff so you kind of like weighing back and forth to get that tension and it's so funny how like a a regular old card game which has a neat hook gets bumped up another level by one simple addition that little push your luck aspect which I really appreciated about Erbion it is number five, though. Um, I guess my only thing about Erbion is I have a lot of card games. Mm-hmm. I have a lot, a lot, a lot of card games. <laughs> if you uh, you see my games over here, this is a <laughs> fraction. <laughs> and I have a, all of my, my entire deck of, of my entire like, Shovel Solo games is over there. A lot of little boxes. Does this game really rise above? Um, I mean, is it the best card, in the, best card game in the universe? You know, no. Uh, obviously, because I have it ranked lower than the other one. Um, <laughs> is it better than some of the other solo games that I've played? You know, I mean, I you know, I have a lot of solo games. I have a lot of card games. So I guess you know, I, I I like the fact that I have this little bit of a different wrinkle. Does that is that wrinkle enough to take it kind of to that next level, that eight range or that nine range? Mm-hmm. Eh, it depends. Um, eh, I do get you get some frustrating uh, draws where it's like you kind of have no chance. And there's a couple of things that you kind of get that that uh. You know, happened there again, and this is another one where I didn't love the expansions, uh, especially the meta cards. The meta cards, you have to remember what they are, and they're kind of like off to the side. Yeah. I think when when it comes to Oniverse expansions, the best expansions are ones that shuffle into the main experience rather than just like hang on the side. Yeah. Some of them do like and generate extra rules, and the main Urbion expansion is a bunch of extra cards on the side. So I didn't, I wasn't excited by that either. So good game. Really glad I thank you for making me. Uh, acquire it. It will be in my collection. It's just it, in order, to, in terms of ranking it, uh, that's where I kind of uh, made it land on number five. Just so minor, minor nickel. So that's yeah. uh, Irby. Well, you know what's really interesting is that like I feel like our list are like one off because my number four is Irbion, ah, which yeah, cool. like, really interesting. But like I, I really like it. I do. I think it's really fun. But I do think that there are too many situations where you just can't win. And it, like, especially if you get used to the deck and you start counting the cards, it becomes more and more obvious when that's going right. to happen and you can get kind of frustrated. Yeah. The other thing, so I like the art in the Oniverse series. So this is not any slag on the art, but I think graphically, um, Urbion is the hardest one to look at. Like all the yeah. element symbols that you're matching to cities are easy to kind of miss against the backdrop of all that colorful art. Um, mm. It just isn't as elegantly designed not even it's not even the art it's like the graphic design of the cards it's not as well done in my opinion as the other universe games i do like it 
um, among solo card games. It's not one that I'm going to trade off. Uh, I like it better than play games that I've played this year or in the past few years, but it's not like, oh, you must have it or else your life is mm-hmm. incomplete, like sort of game. And right. I, I think actually it's important to say that because it's out of print. So I think a lot of it, it's actually getting more expensive too. Like I bought it. I, I have one with like French rules that I got for like maybe 35 bucks. Mm. Oh, no. Like, I don't feel guilty about that. Like I'm a solo reviewer. It's what you do, you know? But, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I was looking for it. It was like 145 bucks. It was like the lowest price I could find. Like when I was just goofing around the internet last week, and I'm sure there are lower prices, but holy crap, that's too expensive for what this mm-hmm. is. Don't don't fall into the FOMO trap and like pay I too much for it. I traded for mine. There's one man's. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that don't know what they have. <laughs> <laughs> so you took advantage of some poor schmuck, Jason. Poor schmuck. How could you? How could you? <laughs> Although I did trade Obsession for it, so I did give up a good game for Urbion and something else. Because I, I, I am getting the yeah. second edition of, of, uh, of Obsession, so I, you know, first edition, okay, Urbion, woo! That's fair, that's fair. I'm actually trading my first edition of Obsession for something else, so. Right, yeah. that's the way to do it. Uh, I mean, do you want to comment about the art now, since we're it's kind of coming up? Yeah. So we might as well... Yeah, why not? Let's do it. Uh, Let's do I it. mean, so... I think you touched on the main negative of the art, which is it can create confusion depending on the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not always obvious what is actually being represented. So, you know, the Incubate and the Songe, I think they're, you know, their color, their tones are a little bit, this, you know, they're different so you can tell them that way, but yeah. really, I mean, it's... Uh, um, and the way that it interacts with the graphic design elements. So, like, I mean, I think a, a game that we're going to be reviewing in a little bit or talk about a little bit is worse with this but because it depends on how much symbology is on the cards. Yeah. Uh, but it really does mess with... If, you, if, you're, if the game relies on a lot of symbology, it, the art style messes with it. And some of the games, it felt like they were crafted with that in mind. So, yeah. you know, it, it doesn't seem like it's a problem at all. Some of them, not so much. And I think Urbion falls into the trap of, like... Uh, some of this stuff is getting in the way, <laughs> you yeah. know, uh, and causing a little bit of a not going to record scratch moment. The good part, it is relaxing. It just puts me in a nice, Agreed. calm dreamscape headspace. You could tell, like you know, the incubate and the songe, whether it's the cards or the little meeple guys, they persist over. So it's a sense of a, a world. And if I want to play a solo game and I want to relax. You know, if I'm playing Friday, then I'm, like, trying to survive and struggle and all that kind of stuff. Or if I'm, you know, playing Race for the Galaxy, it's all this space nonsense yeah. and everything. Um, this is just like, okay, I am in a nice, relaxing space right now. Um, I don't know exactly what's going on, but that's the point. I'm not supposed to know what's yeah. going on. And I don't need to. I can let my ego go. My grasping brain just like, all right, I'm just going to sink into something for a little while. So yeah. I really appreciate that. I also, I actually do find the art aesthetically pleasing. I enjoy it. Um, the other thing that's really neat about it is that every game in the universe has its own way of playing, but the art really does have a way of driving home to you that they're all placed in the same universe. Um, right. You'll see different sort of characters or images appear from game to game, and there's something really nice about that. Little callbacks to other games, little connections between games that maybe you didn't notice before. It really pulls the whole series together in a way that is very pleasing. I like it a lot. Right. Uh, I mean, at, at the end of the day, <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, it's completely a, a draw. And I know some people kind of get, you know, you know, I don't want to play this because I don't know what the heck's going on. Uh, it's getting in the way of my graphic design, or I just think it's ugly, or I just think it's a like right. fuzzy year, right. or something like that. Nuts to you. <laughs> 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 so, what was your uh, what was your uh, number four? All right. Uh, so my number four, it I have a feeling that we are going to be one off. Uh, on this one. Uh, so my number four is Sylveon. Uh, yeah. So Sylveon is... Oh, maybe not. Uh, so Sylveon is the tower defense card-based game. Uh, so uh, you have four decks of fire cards, basically. I'm not yeah, sure, yeah. exactly sure what they're called. The, the, the Ravage or something. Or the Pawn is the Ravage, and I forget what the fire enemies are called. But you have four decks of them, and the, you every turn you could be revealing four of the uh, the top of those four decks, and they're yeah. going to be kind of plant for a zombie style, moving along a grid towards your trees. Uh, and if they make it to the trees, they're going to set fire to the forest, and then, you know, oh, no, you no, lose. Yeah. 
Right. Uh, but you have cards. You have your own you know, resources that you're going to play. Uh, so you have fountains, which block. You have trees, which you know, provide water for the trees in case uh, they get burned. Uh, you have powers, you know, like the whale and the. the <laughs> you could you could really do a lot of manipulation. It yes. really is plants for zombies. Also, the this cart- is absolutely a game about forest fires that has whale friends in it, which I personally am in favor. <laughs> <laughs> and elephants and all these things. <laughs> it's it's the universe. Um, it's dreams. Anything could be in the forest is fine. <laughs> Just go with it. In- in the uh, so in the more advanced game, which is don't play the beginner game unless you really have no idea what you're doing. Yeah, just um, skip but it. But the more advanced game, you have this draft at the beginning, so you can kind of craft your deck at the beginning, which is a, a feature. You know, definitely. You know, if you if you want to try different strategies, like I remember one time, it's like I'm going to draft all the doves, and just you know, uh, the doves make you discard one of the uh, the fire cards. So I'm like, I'm just going to draft lots of doves and just like. Uh, murder the, <laughs> the fire deck, which is a completely different strategy than some of the other ones. Yeah. So that's fun. That's cool. Uh, the reason why it's number four and it's a seven point five. Again, these are all seven point five for me. What what takes it down from an eight? And I love playing this game. The thing that the, the one thing that kind of held it back from a, like an eight or higher rating is, despite this flexibility and strategy, I find that at the end of the day, I I follow the same strategy. Um, their fountain cards, like the four string fountain cards, which is the, the the most powerful card you can kind of put. It stays there. You just put it there. I put a couple there, and I think like just you know, kind of game over. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. like I just I feel like I can you know funnel most of the fire cards into into my main um, my main fountain, my main defense basically. Uh, and you know, there's so many ways in which I can, you know, like okay, I'm gonna you know set fire to this thing. I'm gonna you know uh, manipulate this fire to kind of like land over here. And I don't know, like I just feel like even if I try to different strategies, like and there's that expansion where you can cast give you different victory conditions. Yes, which I actually really enjoy. I enjoy that, but like I'm trying to make the game harder. I might as well just put some four fountains down in the way. <laughs> You know, and, and those are really, really hard to get. You have to construct your deck a certain way. Um, so I just, I wish, I, w- I, I win a lot. And yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to win these games a lot. I want to have that little frustrating experience. And so because I win a lot, because I'm, you know, I, because of the strategy is kind of like calling. Yeah. Um, it's like, uh, you know, and, and this is a game, speaking of the expansions, I do not play uh, unless I've shuffled everything together. I don't know how you feel, but like, you know, yeah. uh, that basic game is like, uh, okay, but if I shuffle everything together a little bit longer, uh, but, you know, I think it's worth it for the extra little bit of challenge, but I still win. I don't want to win all the time. <laughs> and I'm not doing the hard mode. I'm not drawing less cards. None of that. I am not tying one hand behind my back to make a game hard. There's no way. <laughs> Uh, but that's 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 my only thing, and I know people have a different experience of Sylveon. Like maybe it's a little bit harder for them. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Just play your four, play the four fountain, and just win. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so is your number three Sylvia? It is not. Uh-huh. Oh no! So it's my not. number three is actually um, Arion. Okay. I like it. I really like Arion. Um, it's very fun. But I typically prefer sort of card-based games over dice-based games anyway. It just wasn't going to be the one for me. Does it make sense? Um, right. But I really, I like Arion a lot. So in Arion, for those of you who don't know, uh, you are trying to build a bunch of different airships. And for each airship, you need a blueprint, a material, and a crew member. You can only recruit the crew member after you've already got your blueprint and your material. And you are rolling combinations of dice or trying to in order to acquire the right cards. So... You know, if you can't acquire a card, you have to sacrifice cards that are out on the market in order to re-roll and try again. Those cards, however, also act as your timer. So when you run out of cards and you aren't rolling what you need to roll, then you can lose the game by running out of time and not getting things rolled correctly. So some of it's, you know, thinking about, okay, what do I, what dice do I want to keep? What cards have already gone by that I know I don't need? What can I safely sacrifice? And you have to make those choices and have those thoughts, which I really enjoy. But also, like, sometimes I roll really hot. Sometimes I don't. I, mm-hmm. I really don't. <laughs> right. And it's like, you know, like, I caught a really good play on film 
which I was grateful for for my YouTube channel. But like the warm up play was horrible. Like you just you just don't know. And the my my actual complaint about Ariana because it goes by so fast. Like who cares if you get unlucky? It's just a dice game. It's no big deal. Um, is that I mix up the iconography all the time. Like I get confused about whether like I've got the right things. Mm -hmm. because it's not that it's unclear if you know what you're looking at. It's just that somehow mm -hmm. your eyes aren't drawn to the things that you need to know, and you have to keep checking yourself and thinking about it. Like There is too much information yeah. on the cards. Like, the back of the cards has materials that appear in the deck. I don't yeah. need that. I, I can either remember, or you can put that to the side. Or Like, there's, you know, you di the different games have player rates. No, like, okay, there's this many... Yeah. Uh, Suns and um, Onirem, or there's this many, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, what you would call it, the missionaries and Otilion. I don't have to be reminded of that in the midst of my game. Yeah. But for whatever reason, Arion just puts so much in graphical information on both sides of the card. Yeah. It's the game that I was thinking of when, you know, talking about the interaction between the graphic design and the iconography with the art. And that one becomes really, really tough. Yeah. Not really sure why they went I that can't, direction. I can't disagree. Like, I like knowing what's in the decks, but some of the cards, especially, I think it's like, is it the material cards or the crew cards? Basically, they'll tell you information about two different kinds of ships that that card might belong to. Ugh. Or like what, there's two different things that it could right. need. And it's like, why are you showing me this? Oh my God. Like, I can't right. keep track of this. This is like, why are you giving me this? Ex it's like actually extraneous. And I don't need to. I don't need to know. Yeah. Right. It's, it's, it's easy enough to either look at a reference or uh, keep track of it in your head if you play enough. Yeah. Yeah. I can't disagree. Not my number three. Ooh. What's your number three? <laughs> Not my number three. So we have arrived at Castellion. You're number ah, six. Okay, uh, okay. My number three. This one cracks the eight barrier for me. Uh, I really, really like uh, Castellion. I am not a Talian guy. I'm not. I will carcass over. Some tiles come up. Like, you were supposed to eat them, Jason. <laughs> Anyway, I'm not normally a towel laying person. I kind of am because I think the act of towel laying is fun, but I just, you know, I, any towel laying game that has like victory points, I just don't like it because you have to score adjacencies and yeah. you're thinking of seven things. I feel like my head gets filled very, very fast uh, when it comes to a towel laying game that has like point scoring because it's always like seven different categories to, to um, keep in mind. And I don't like that. Uh, so this one is just, you know, your meeting criteria. And I always play on hard mode. I always play on, like, there's that easy, the middle, and the hard mode. I always play on hard mode. Yeah. Uh, so that's number one. Um, and I think that, that's fun because you have to make the different formations. You have to make, you know, and you don't know. So, like, you make a, you know, one, the cards. You make a tower. You reveal it, uh, which is four tiles straight up of the same thing and the same family. And then you see what it is. Okay, I need this. So I'm going to make my tower again. The protean tower, I call it. The tower that's always changing. It just feels very organic. Mm -hmm. So I didn't – I don't have the same problem you did. Maybe that's where we differ yeah. of how the rules work. I just kind of get it for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And it makes sense. So it's like I play a red bomb and I destroy one and I move one. And the move doesn't have to follow a rule. So I, yeah. I just remember that for whatever reason because I like forming and reforming. My, it has a little bit of a sim feel because I, yeah. I can play and make it look how, how I want to. Uh, I can make the – like if once I know the rules and what I have to accomplish, mm -hmm. I feel very smart in that, okay, I'm going to do uh, th uh, three horizontal lines. I'm just going to do all squares yeah. because you know I don't care what the, the features say. If I make all the squares, I'm going to win anyway. I really, really love it. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I didn't every time I play it because I play it like once a year, you know, especially for this playthrough. I, I just go back to it. it; just makes me feel good. <laughs> I really dig it, um, and especially with the powers. Um, yeah, the so powers are way cool. Rules. Um, this is another game where the expansions are kind of a waste of time. I just play with the base stuff. Yeah. Um, the expansion, so like the Shadow Menace is basically, you know, it's another little area where you have to like kind of put more tiles. Yeah. It's just basically like throw out a tile. 
Uh, and I kind of do have the rules bend a little bit because if you get those those the enemy pieces, the time pieces that yeah. you can't get rid of, if you get two of them early, you're done. So it's like, eh, I'm just gonna for my first game, I'll reshuffle those. Like like so little changes like that. But yeah. even with that, I just love the activity of the reforming the castle uh, and like kind of molding it depending on what goals I have to achieve. Really, really dig it. So Castellion, good stuff. Number three. It's a good pick. I mean, it is a good game. My only problem is I have, like, little mini panic attacks. Like, when I, like, look down, it's like things are misplaced and they're, they were put together in the wrong way. And I'm like, wait, that's the wrong, that's the wrong, that's the wrong. And I'm like, wait, no. I, I, I shifted that. That was legal. It was okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and um, the co-op version. So all these games play co-op. Yeah, I've never bothered. fine. Ever. Uh I think they're all okay. Like, okay as co-ops, they kind of don't differ. This Mm -hmm. is the only one where the co-op really just stinks. Mm -hmm. So, because you're... You you basically have to make two castles. And there aren't enough tiles for that. So it ends up being like one person makes a castle and the other person absorbs all the bad tiles. And then... The once the the condition is met, then the other person starts to work on the condition, right. and then the first guy absorbs all the crappy tiles. They get the, their castle destroyed. And it's like there's always a, a case in which one person's absorbing all the bad stuff, and that is not a, that's not good co-op stuff play at all. Yeah. Um. So this is a solo game. Uh. Do not play with the expansion. <laughs> not bother with expansions, in my opinion. Uh. But I love me some tile lane. It doesn't have any point scoring. Beautiful stuff. Nice. All right, so uh, number two. So my number two is Sylveon, which I adore. I absolutely adore Sylveon. I love all the different animal cards. I like all the different powers. I like trying to get the cards to work in combo. Like I like. I think it's the squirrels that let you peek, and then the doves that let you eliminate yes. all those cards. And like they work really nice together. Yep. But I have the same problem as you, which is that the difficulty levels in the game aren't balanced enough for me it's either too easy once you know what you're doing or if you make it hard for yourself it's like blisteringly hard right and it's like there's not a happy medium where you feel the right level of challenge but also satisfied like Mm -hmm. you know i don't like to feel hamstrung i like to feel like i'm doing cool stuff with my cards but i also don't like pretty much knowing i'm gonna win so. Yeah, I mean, I think we're on the same boat. I mean, yeah. the, the strategy is kind of easy, uh, you know, that just get those four fountains out there, and the, the, some of the cards just feel like unfair to play, yeah. like oh, you know, or like you know, so um, you know, the one card that could just like destroy one of the four uh, monsters. And it's like oh wow, this barely didn't kill, didn't even cost me anything, or <laughs> it's I don't know, like it, like you mentioned before about combos, like some of them just come yeah. together and it's like, and plus the trees, I never play with the trees. Like, why? No, you never do. Because unless you play, you don't like, need, get really burnt. It's like, eh, you don't need them. Like, if you're playing right, you don't need the trees. If you're playing good, yeah, if you know what you're doing at all, yeah. you need the trees. Um, so I love the core gameplay. Love, yeah. love, love. That's why it's, it made it to number four. Yeah. It's just the difficulty but was. The gameplay play of it, I just oh, so love the experience. I would really, I mean, I, I just wish it had the right difficulty level because it's almost perfect for me. Almost, right. but not quite. All right. So we are going to round out the shuffling, okay, uh, right, so right. to speak, of our places. Um, and I'm going to talk about my number two, which is Arion. Uh, so Arion hit number two for me because, and this is for a very particular reason. So all the stuff that um, Liz was saying is completely true about the dice rolling and uh, all the fun of, you know, that stuff. Um, the core game isn't great i think the core game is just like kind of like okay just roll and whatever the best is whatever the best roll is just kind of do yeah uh and there's it's kind of it's challenging um it's actually more challenging than i remembered i remember when i first played it it was like you know bang and bang but when i played it recently it was like oh this (laughs) this core game is pretty uh not as easy as i remember um but what i do and i do not recommend people do this because i'm crazy and have a lot of time in my hands I shuffled together all the expansions. I shuffled together the flagship, the Ooh. hourglass, the stonebirds, the piers, the hellkite. I'm like, I have this giant setup of four <laughs> layers of cards, and then my my dice tray is over here. And it takes about an hour and twenty minutes to play, which is way too long. I don't recommend anybody do this. And yet How, you love it. However, however. It opens up a really rich decision space. 
So the way Oniverse games expansions always work is that the expansion, you shuffle it in, and it does a good thing and a bad thing. So, it, you know, like, okay, you can play this card, and it gives you this extra, like, a wild card ability or an ability to reshuffle and look for your stuff. Or, but, you know, I also have these other cards that kind of make it harder for me to win. So it's always something, a give and take. So each, it's the same thing as here. Uh, each expansion adds a good thing and a bad thing. So when you roll, you have all of these options. And it's like, okay, I have four in a row. I can take this, or I can take this for the expansion, or I can, you know, score the 26 because I have to, you know, get rid of the list one thing, or I can keep rolling because I need five. Uh, and I'm going to take this, and it just I love that decision space. I love having so many deci- uh, so many options for what I can do in a turn. Arion, the base Arion, I found kind of railroaded a little bit, which isn't the worst thing in the world. It's Yahtzee for, uh, at the end of the day. Right. But that larger decision space of the expansion shuffle together, you don't have to do all of them. Just do a couple. Uh, with a couple, you get enough spice to you know make it work. Uh, if you're gonna if you're going to uh, shuffle in a couple, I do recommend the first two, the flagship and the hourglass, is usually pretty yeah. good. To- I can't simple, disagree. simple. Like you know, if you don't want a lot of extra rule space, which I don't care about, <laughs> I'll take cards all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> so that that experience, even though I'm nuts to like the like a really long area on, I love it so good. Uh, so that was what vaulted it over the pack to my number two space area. Nice. Well, it's a. I know it's a big mystery. What our number one is. <laughs> <laughs> so we did not confer about these ahead of time. We did not. No, we didn't even talk about it. Like, <laughs> right. So, yeah. I mean, my favorite one is still Onirim. 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 Doesn't he? Is that how he says it? Onirim. Yes. Onirim. I know it's the Oni because it's Oniron. It's like the Greek word for right. dream. But like, other than that, I don't know. French people. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't pronounce it. My French is horrible. Kel Um right. But, uh, so, Onirim, I, it's just so good. I mean, it's not good in the sense that, you know, I can have this master strategy that's going to win. But it is so good for me in the sense that it's very relaxing. There Mm -hmm. are decisions to make, you know, especially if you know how to count cards and you're kind of aware of what might be left in the deck, what you're risking, what you're giving up. Um... But it's just such a calm game for a game that's about being trapped in a nightmare forever, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, well, not forever. I mean, you get out. That's the whole point of it, right? Well, yeah, you're, but like, not if you doors. lose. Hmm? Not if you lose. Okay, and well, you just get sent. It's like a video game. You get sent back to start. Right. No, but it's, it's very relaxing. I really like it. So for those of you who have right. not played on Onirim, if you're a solo gamer and you have not played on Onirim, just go download, go download the app. It's cheap. Try it. Just do it. There's no reason not to do it. Um... But, I mean, you're really just laying down cards in a row. You're trying to alternate symbols, but get the same colors in a row. Because if you get three colors in a row, you open doors. If you open all the doors, you get out. It's, the, it's, it's very simple. But there are nightmare cards in there that come and take stuff away from you. So you either have to sacrifice your hand, and if you run out of your deck, you're out of time. You can sacrifice cards at the top of the deck. Or you can undo progress by giving up some of the doors that you've opened. So none of your choices are good. There's some things that you can do to mitigate those nightmare cards but they're gonna come a mess with you and Mm -hmm. that's really it it's like the most chill small footprint nice little card game and i will never get rid of it ever right (laughs) i think the the secret to the 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 base game the base game being so good is the key Mm -hmm. how the key is so flexible and so powerful and when you get one you get kind of excited it's like okay that's a real choice you haven't even done anything you just have the key it's like okay am i going to dump this hunt it down down one of the nightmare cards or am i going to keep it and do the push your luck thing where it's like hmm i might get i might draw the door that matches the key which is like a really uh it win it's just it's it's not like an auto win the game but it's like wow you know i'm way ahead of the curve uh, in terms of what I can do with these things, or you yeah. can just use the key to finish one of your sets. Yeah. Where it's like, oh man, uh, you know, I really need to finish this set now, but this key's too valuable. Right. So for whatever reason, like so much of the decision space is is funneled down to that right. one. So card. you mean the key yeah. to enjoying the game is handling your key symbol really well? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's not even a pun. <laughs> I make bad jokes. What can I say? That's a terrible joke. I have no shame. I'm a classroom teacher. Like, I just... 
<laughs> I spell out gro- groaners like all day, every day. Like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh, um, so so that's the base game, and it's very calming, very relaxing. I mean, yeah. it's one of those games that you could just play in five minutes. If you have the app, you play it in one minute. Um, people complain about the shuffling. Yes, the, the shuffling is a big problem in the in the physical game. Um, if you play care. a lot, you have to sleeve them. Yeah. You have to have to sleeve the cards, which makes it not fit into the box, which is annoying. But yeah, whatever. Um, so I remember I just had I had my sleeve for a long time until I got the app. It's like okay, I'm gonna play this now. Yeah. Um, Although I do like, I actually like the tactile feeling of shuffling cards. It's especially if I'm feeling sort of, if I'm having like a high anxiety night and I want to play something to chill out, I actually really like Onirim because of the card shuffling. Right. Because it's like yeah. an action I can do with my hands when I'm feeling kind of fidgety. I, I definitely see that. It's just a lot. Like, you know, shuffling about nine, ten times. Yeah. That's a lot of, that's a lot for a deck to take. But if you don't want to do it, then you either sleeve it or get an app. See, right. all the problems are solved. There it is. <laughs> so then there's that, and it, it. But I don't think it would be my favorite game of the universe with, with just the base game. It's no. good that, as the base game. It's good. The expansions, modular. You add them in. They add enough flavor, just like with the, the different other expansions. Uh, so you could do that in the app too. Like there's three of them, and then I forgot the other four, which makes me really mad. Yeah, that's <laughs> lame. Yes, they should. totally lame. <laughs> should have been on that. So it's another game in which I play the Shuffle Together 7 expansion epic whatever it is. It's huge on my table. It takes up my entire card table with the the dream catchers and the the, the whatever the the it says the the meta rules. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. You know, it, there's a whole bunch of things that are going on with that and it's actually not as much shuffling because the dream catchers catch a lot of the cards. Yeah. So it's not as bad to shuffle that big old deck, but oh man, it's so much fun! <laughs> <laughs> in, in a weird way, I feel like I'm going on an adventure. Yeah. So I begin, and I'm starting, and I'm very you know meager and everything. But I'm tr- but the the meta rules kind of hang over the early games. So you have to, like deal with the meta rules. Yeah. And then once you're through the meta rules, then like you kind of decide what else you're going to do so like okay i'm going to go on a run where i'm going to open up a bunch of doors now oh the towers is in there i've I have one tower they're very vulnerable to nightmares now this is the part of the game where i'm going to complete my tower row and you know so i have these kind of moments sections within my general journey through the universe deck when mm-hmm. i play the seven and then by the end of it i just feel so satisfied like wow i did i opened 13 doors and i <laughs> met all these denizens and Yes. Uh, it, it's like the board I game representation of like sleeping for 12 hours straight. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't played it in a long I when it cuz I got into Oni when I first was getting into games gaming about like 4 or 5 years ago and I played the heck out of that big yeah. game. You know, just a, you know, I had a weekend and I didn't have kids yet so it's like I could play all I, all I wanted. Uh now so thank you so much for inviting me to do this top 6 because it let me put that to the table again. I really wanted to play that in the app. It's not happening yet. Probably not happening at all. Otherwise, it would have happened by now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, it's such a pleasure. And you just even yeah. go back to the base game. You know, even scaling it back down, just like, you know, quick five minutes and do it. So, Oni Room, no question, my number one. Another Oniverse game. And I hope we get more. I do, Shady too. Torbe. We need more? You know? Give me more? I mean, I know that my it's- I know that your first is my favorite, but I like the other ones. Don't stop. It's, like, <laughs> it's definitely, you know, when Z-Man got bought by Asmodee, it's kind of like put that big question mark. It's like, do they really, are they going to follow through? Are they going to let you do your, uh, you know, thing as opposed to Z-Man with right. Zev that would have just published any of your silly games? Are we going to get to the 10? I remember hearing a rumor that right. you had 10 ideas of mine, uh, not including Urbion, which I knew wasn't going to get reprinted unless yeah. your video for the Dice Tower inspires a fervor. We'll see. Yes, look out for my Urbion review on Dice Tower, and I'm doing a playthrough for for this channel as well because I feel like it should be more documentation of the game. I mean, you know, but it's part of the family. It's part of the family. It Even if it's a run to the litter, it's part of the family. It is, and you know, I think one thing I really enjoyed about the process of playing back through these games to rank them with you is that you know I'm a game reviewer. I play a lot of games I don't necessarily like that much. I play a lot of games that I feel like I have to play. And it was just so nice to take a little tour back through games that I actually enjoy and spend yep. that time with them. And I found it very renewing and pleasant mm-hmm. and, you know, reminds me why I keep some of my old favorites around, even when I have, like, a review copy pile that's huge and kind of freaking me out. So, 
This is a good <laughs> a good choice. <laughs> <laughs> a good detour. Uh, so yeah, I mean, we definitely love these games, and maybe part of going do the ranking. I mean, ranking is just fun in general. Yeah, it's just goofy. Yeah. Um, but part of it is again, like like Liz said, you know, just kind of nice and relaxing. But maybe a little bit of a call to let's get some more. I mean, yeah. whatever gets made in this series, I'm going to play. I'm going to be front and center, buy a copy, and just you know bang it out. And, and a lot of them are hard to get now. I think Onium is it's a hard hard thing to get sometimes. Uh, all of them. I, I mean, Castellian might be a little bit hard to get to, and you know some of the other ones. Um, so I jump on them as soon as I see them, and I'm never going to give them up. Yep. Uh, so any future games, we will. I promise, if we, any future game, we're going to release top seven Oniverse games, or we'll release top eight Oniverse games video. <laughs> Why not? We could do. Eventually, it will just be a top ten if things actually come out the way they're supposed to. So <laughs> Certainly hope so. Uh, but yeah, thanks to everyone who's watching for joining us for our ranking of the Oniverse games. Uh, if you want to comment with your own opinions about Oniverse games, you know where to go. The comments below. And happy gaming. Later, everybody. <laughs>